The Fed keeps attacking the markets by raising interest rates in an attempt to break through to the economy and bring down inflation. Meanwhile, I'm just over here like, I didn't sell this time, right? If the Fed gets through to the markets, then like Michael Burry says, we could be in for another half of the dip in equities because the tightening of monetary policy will lead to decreased earnings and more downside in the markets. If the Fed can't get through to the markets though, then inflation could continue running out of control. This month we got the June CPI report, and economists were expecting a year-over-year -year inflation to come in at 8.8%. That's just 0.2% higher than the previous 40-year high of 8.6% from last month. Unfortunately, however, as usual, they did get it wrong and inflation came in at 9.1%, way higher than expected. What's worse is that these books are totally cooked and inflation is probably running closer to and possibly even north of 20%. Here we have the US Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index Summary and as you can see the inflation did come in year over year at 9.1% and a month over month reading of 1.3%. Food went up by 1% for the month, energy commodities went up 10% and gas went up 11.2%. These are really bad numbers and as you can see everything continued to the upside except for fuel oil which was supposedly down 1.2%. All of this is really bad news and these are tough times, but if you think this is bad, just wait because the worst is yet to come. The yield curve has inverted deeper than it has since the year 2000, even more of a dip than it had back in 2006 leading up to the 2008 financial crisis. So that means that we could be seeing a longer and deeper recession than the Great Recession. Some people are starting to think that inflation has peaked, and CPI could come down next month because fuel prices have started to come down. This red line is crude oil prices, and as you can see, a dip in the price of oil usually leads to a dip in CPI. And when these two both go on the downside, we're either in a recession or there's a recession on the way, indicated by these gray boxes. Right now you can see by this red line that oil prices have started to dip, but inflation has continued to go higher. That's because whenever fuel prices climb higher, so does everything else, because it takes gas to transport products to retailers for them to be sold, obviously, but it does also take time for the price fluctuations to be passed on to the customer. And for this reason, fluctuations in price of oil are a leading indicator for inflation. This means that inflation should start to come down real soon. The Fed works on delayed data and since CPI data came in higher than expected, the Fed could conclude that their rate hikes have not been bringing down inflation thus far and they need to be more aggressive. As this article by CNBC says, traders are betting that the Fed could raise interest rates by a full percentage point this month because of the inflation reading coming in way higher than expected. Everyone's been waiting on inflation to peak because they think when inflation does peak, the Fed will lower rates again, making charts go up. However, because the Fed is working on delayed data, they could continue raising rates as the economy is slowing down, but they wouldn't even know it because numbers aren't in yet. Additionally, the Fed might continue raising rates until inflation is sustained lower or under 5% for a while, and there's a couple reasons for that. First, the Fed needs inflation to be sustainably under where it is now, because if they lower rates too quickly, then inflation could reignite, bringing back all of our woes. Also, if the Fed doesn't get rates high enough, then they won't be able to stop the recession whenever it does come. On the other hand, because the yield curve has inverted and oil prices have started to come down, the Fed might decide that inflation has already peaked and that they can pause their rate hikes. But if they do that, then they're still in danger of not having rates high enough whenever the recession shows up. During a recession, the Fed lowers interest rates, usually by around 5%, to make it easier to borrow money, therefore stimulating the economy. At the beginning of the pandemic, the Fed lowered interest rates to 0%, and since the recession is always going to come at some point, ideally the Fed should have raised interest rates as the economy was heating up, and inflation was on the rise, but instead they insisted that inflation was transitory and now it might be too late. This is the federal funds rate, and as you can see it has been in this downtrend since the mid 80s. Obviously this trend will continue unless one of two things happen. Since the Fed is so far behind the curve, if they don't raise interest rates high enough before the recession inevitably hits, they will either have to continue raising rates while the economy is declining, pushing us further into the recession causing a deflationary spiral and possibly landing us in a full-on depression. Either that or they're going to have to send us straight to the upside down with negative interest rates. Because the US dollar is the world reserve currency and US treasuries are seen as the safest asset in the world during a time of global uncertainty like the slowing global growth that we're currently seeing, 
The dollar has been in high demand recently, and that's why it's being devalued at a slower rate than other currencies around the world. So compared to itself, the dollar has been losing value and it's causing us pain here in America, but it's also been gaining value against other currencies. And while this is good if you want to travel the world or import something from another country, all of this adds to the global pain with us heading into a global recession. And this is because it makes our exports more expensive while other countries are already struggling. Less money for more expensive product means lower sales. Lower sales means lower earnings, and that means lower stock market, affecting your gains and causing a lower GDP. This in turn makes the recession worse, and this is why most people want a weaker dollar. Unfortunately, it's also why we're stuck in a cycle of slowing growth, making a stronger dollar, and that stronger dollar making more slowing growth. As the economy slows down, people pour money into the dollar, and as people pour money into the dollar, the dollar gets stronger. That slows the global economy, and to stimulate the global economy, the Fed will have to continue lowering interest rates. It was once thought that negative interest rates were impossible. After all, why would anyone pay anyone to borrow money from them? Sweden, Switzerland, and Japan have all had negative interest rates with mixed results though. Japan has experienced a lost decade because of it, but none of them have the world reserve currency. The idea behind negative interest rates is that it would cost banks to deposit their money with the Fed, incentivizing them to loan out their money stimulating the economy. But no one knows for sure what would happen if interest rates were negative in the United States because we do have the world reserve currency. For one thing, it would cost money for you to have your money held in a bank account. So some people think that most people would just hoard cash, not spending it and making the recession worse. Without a CBDC or some kind of regulation on what that money can be spent on, I believe that it would just push up the prices of hard assets and equities just like it did over the past couple of years as the Fed pumped the economy full of liquidity. This will make the richer rich and none of that money will make it back into the real economy because unless we increase the supply of goods, that money will have nowhere else to go. Lucky for us, the government is working on a CBDC as we speak so they can program our money and decide what we can and can't spend our money on. This way they can continue printing money without you being able to save any of it. After all, why should you be able to save up for a new phone, a new pair of shoes, or go out to eat? That money belongs to the rich, and they need that to fill up their yachts. I mean, have you seen the price of yacht fuel recently? In countries where there is currently negative interest rates, a lot of money is converted into US bonds because we have positive interest rates. So negative interest rates could disincentivize countries from buying our bonds, essentially making it harder for the US to borrow money. Our government prints money to service our debts by selling bonds to other countries, essentially getting a loan to pay the interest on our previous loans. Also institutional investors like pension funds have most of their assets in the form of bonds, so negative yields could mean the collapse of those as well. That means that the tool the Fed usually uses to stimulate the economy could do the opposite in this upside down world and slow it down even more. This could easily lead to a hyperstagflationary environment with the Fed continually printing money to stimulate an economy full of people who are too scared to spend money. No one knows how long the Fed can continue printing money without increasing production or adding value to the economy, but unless the Fed hikes like Volcker, we're gonna find out soon enough. The Fed might be able to pull off this magic trick kicking the can down the road one more time, but eventually they are going to have to raise interest rates no matter how much pain it causes, or we're going to have negative rates here in America. It's just a matter of when, not if. Let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.